I did it again. I bought another sea -Doo, but this time I bought two. About six months ago, I got my first ever sea -Doo, and it was a huge learning curve, especially for something that was sitting for 14 years. I didn't know anything about sea -Doo's. I didn't even know it was a two stroke when I first got it. <laughs> People had to tell me what it was. I had no idea. Ended up rebuilding the whole thing and I had a lot of fun. My friends had a lot of fun. It was an awesome little ride. I ended up selling it a few months ago, which ever since I did it, I regretted it because I miss it. I honestly miss it. And I miss it so much, I had to buy two more. <laughs> now, I wasn't planning on getting any this soon, but you just come across deals that are just too good to pass up. Now, everything you see here, both of these have titles and they're supposed to run $500 for everything. The trailer is worth that alone. <laughs> I mean, look at this trailer. It's a nice trailer. Now, these sea are a bit old, but they're supposed to run and drive. He promised me that they will run and drive. They just need batteries right now. But I'm going to quickly go over everything so far. I haven't put batteries in it. I haven't even tried to start them yet, but let me go over everything I know about them to you guys. We're going to start with the oldest here. This is a 1996 Bombardier sea -Doo. I know how to say it. I know how to say it now. <laughs> you don't have to teach me anymore. It's an SPI. I, I don't know a whole lot about this. I tried doing research on it, and I only found research on the SPs. I'm guessing I is like another sub model to it. I don't, I don't, I really don't know. So if you guys know any facts about these, please let me know. This is a one or two seater, probably a one comfortably, and it's supposedly really fast. Now going around it, it's obviously in rough shape. Like this stuff is like melting off of it. Needs cleaned. This is actually paint. I'm guessing decals used to be there and they just painted over it to make it look somewhat normal again. Yeah, it needs a good pressure wash, which I'm going to end up pressure washing these. So. It's missing the gauge in here. These are kind of cool. It has like a little pockets to keep your stuff dry. Oh, this comes out too. Now this model doesn't have reverse. It just it goes forward. That's all it does. Oh wow, you can see like a bunch of sand in there too. The wear ring is probably gonna need replaced, but not a big deal. We'll end up doing all that. Pads are in decent shape. The foam underneath this is actually in good shape too. No major cracks in it, nothing wrong with the fiberglass that I've seen so far. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the seat so I can show you guys the motor. Here it is. That is a that is a motor. Yep, that's what it is. Now you can see it's missing the battery. I'm gonna try to find one of those today. And also right here, you can see all these cables are like rotted off. This looks like it used to be for the two cycle oil. And I'm guessing he just mixes it and it's straight into the gas. He just mixes it straight and then put, puts it in the gas. That's what I'm guessing. I didn't ask him. I'll probably call him up and ask him just to make sure. Also, you may notice it has the gray fuel lines, which is a big no-no. <laughs> Everyone hates them. They uh, ended up like corroding in the inside or they like, fall apart in the inside and make like this green goo. Ends up tearing up your engine. So that's on the list of what to replace. Replace all that. I'll probably just block off the, the actual mixing of the gas and I'll just mix it myself in do all that myself. I won't try to hook all this back up. Let's make sure it runs first. Now moving on to the the little bit bigger one. This is like a three-seater. This thing is actually pretty big. This is a 1995 Sea-Doo GTX. Not a GTI. My old one was a GTI. This one's a GTX. This one is in pretty similar shape to the other one. It needs a lot of love. It needs some pressure washing. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they have the same motor in them. Two-stroke. I think it's like they're like 55 horsepower. I don't know the, all the specs on them, but this one seems in pretty good condition. There is a couple spots that I'm kind of concerned about. There's some stress cracking right around here and also around here too. I don't know if that's something to be concerned about. If I need to like grind them down and put more gel coat on top of it. Uh, if you guys know anything about this, if it will start leaking or what to do, please let me know. Major damage uh, right here in the fiberglass. Not really major, but need a little bit of fiberglass work before I paint this. And in the back right here, it's missing like a little chunk. Missing a little piece right here that I need to fix, so. Other than that, it looks pretty straight. Obviously it needs new decals. A seat has seen better days. This is actually a replacement seat. Um, it might clean up, but these, these seat covers go for pretty cheap, so I might just end up replacing it. Yep, they both look pretty similar. I bet this one's actually faster because <laughs> it's a lot smaller. So we'll have, to, we'll have to race them if we get them going. Now it looks like all the gas lines have been replaced. They're all black. They look fairly new. The two cycle lines, I've, they look pretty good. It looks like there's still oil in them, so I'm assuming this motor still mixes itself. I'm missing a couple screws right here. Now it all looks fairly clean. There is a little gunky spot right here. I'm guessing covering a hole. My old jet ski had that similar problem. It was just spraying water right on the battery. So just put a little, 
the little JB weld right there and it fixes it right up. This cover looks like it's falling off. I need to put that back on and obviously get a battery. Steering on both of them are great. <laughs> um, I didn't realize how bad my old steering was because this is actually really easy to turn on both of them. Starter buttons probably should be replaced. Eh, this one's okay. Throttles are okay, they're not locked up. Yeah, everything is good. Gauges, yeah, they, they've seen better days. I don't know if they work or not. We'll have to check that out. It doesn't look like they're gonna work. That whole LCD screen in there is all falling out. This is all cracked and yeah. I don't have high hopes they're gonna work, but maybe we can find replacements. This one doesn't even have a gauge. I think all this is working, yeah. My old Sea-Doo, this was locked up. And that was one of my major problems why I wasn't eating gas. Now let's talk about my plans for these. First off, I wanna get them running, uh, cleaned up and running. Second off, I wanna restore them back to original. I love the look of the 90s jet skis with all these really bright neon colors. They almost look like those old cups that you'd get in gas stations. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna find or make decals that will match what's already on it. Yeah, I, I really want to keep the whole style going. Paint the hoods, recover the seats, go through the engine, make sure it's all running right, probably do spark plugs, maybe even rebuild the carburetors. As for the trailer, it's in pretty good shape. This fender needs fixed, uh, tires need pumped up, and it needs a new wiring harness because I think it's missing. Yeah, wiring harness is like missing. Maybe a new handle right here. Not a whole lot of work needs to go into this, so. I'll just probably end up doing that in an episode. Yeah, trailer is in great shape. It doesn't need a whole lot of work. All these cranks still work and everything, so not a whole lot of work needs to go into this. Right now, I want to go ahead and unhook it from the truck, pull out my pressure washer. Actually, our, our new pressure washer got stolen a couple weeks ago, which I'm really sad about, but I'm going to try to get our old one running again, get that thing running, and just go ahead and start cleaning these things up. I really want to see how they turn out. Because my, my old Sea-Doo, it was a huge transformation. So we're going to try to get this thing cleaned up. Yeah, let's do it. cleaned up very well. This seat looks brand new. There's a little bit of spots left that you gotta dig into a little bit more, but other than that, it's all cleaning up. <laughs> like, pretty much perfect. 
Uh, the bottom is still a little bit yellow. I just need to take some more time to scrub that out. Um, I did notice some more gouges and scratches in the in the actual fiberglass, like right here. It's a pretty deep gouge. I have to fix that. And then the other side, right underneath the Sea Dew logo, it looks like a pretty deep gouge. The older seat, I'm probably gonna have to replace. The newer seat is actually in really good shape, though. I might even have to replace that. It, it all looks really good. I think I can get those little stains out. This obviously needs replaced. The purple's coming off, or the tan, or whatever it is. <laughs> it's coming off. Yeah, a bunch of purple. All this stuff's coming off, too. It was like leaving purple flakes everywhere. But not a big deal. I was already planning on replacing both those anyway. I'm gonna go to the store. I'm gonna try to find new batteries for both of them and then we can try to crank them. I also wanna do a compression test on both of them just for fun, see what see what it's like. Hopefully they're in good shape. Let's do that. I gotta find them at a store first. I don't really know where I can get them. Well, we know at least one runs, <laughs> that's good news. Did you guys notice all the water that was in it? When I checked these spark plugs, they were just hand tightened on. So when I was pressure washing, I must have put a lot of water in it. But I got all the water out. I just had to cycle through it a couple times, get all the water spit out. I took an air compressor, blew, blew all the water out. So I let that dry, put the spark plugs back in, and it didn't take long for it to start up, honestly. I didn't have water running to it, so I didn't let it run for very long, but it's staying idling, so that's a good sign, I think. So we know this one runs. I'm gonna let the battery charge a little bit more. I kind of wore it out. Well, I've worked on this for over an hour, not really having luck keeping it running. Spray start fluid in it, it's, it runs and then it cuts off again. It's getting gas, has spark, but it's just really gross in here. I think the carburetor just needs to be cleaned out. And uh, when I pulled out the gas line, I saw some like green gunk the first time I did it and it's, it's not really a good sign, so. Yeah, probably replace those fuel lines too while I'm at it. 
yeah, I think a good cleaning or I'll probably just have them rebuilt. I'll have both of them rebuilt actually, just to get it out of the way, make sure they're good to go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, throw the top back on, take the charger off. And tomorrow, I think I'm gonna try to take that one out. See if I can have some fun with it. Uh, hopefully I don't get stranded. But this one, I'm gonna have to do in a future video, try to keep it running. Well, she runs. Does she run good? Not really. Uh, it goes up the speed, it starts right up, goes up the speed, and it starts spitting and sputtering, and it's just not really wanting to go all the way. Not, doesn't really want to go to its full potential. Um, I think once we do a tune-up, clean the carburetors, rebuild the carburetors, all that other stuff, they should be able to run fine. This little thing was actually a lot of fun. It's just so small, so you can turn really quick, do a lot of spin moves. Once I actually did get up the speed, I could, it would it would move, it would, go, it would go pretty quick. Yeah, I'm really excited to dig into this, get it all cleaned up, make it look hopefully brand new. Same thing with the other one, I'm excited to get that thing running just to make sure it's actually all good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove both these carburetors and get them ready to be shipped out. I'm shipping them to the same guy who rebuilt my last Cedar carburetor. It looked brand new, performed perfectly, and I've actually thought about redoing it on my own this time, but he does such a good, great job, and in all honesty, I just don't wanna do it. His, his pricing is really affordable, and it always turns out really good, so I'm gonna leave his link in the description. If you need your Cedar carburetor rebuilt, I definitely recommend him. Very professional, it always turns out good. Turnaround time is usually fairly quick too, so his link's in the description. All right, let's take these things out. I got them both out. I can tell you what, the GTX was much easier to get out. This one had some hidden nuts that were just really hard to get to. Other than that, there's really nothing to this thing. It looks fairly clean, just a little bit gunky. Yeah, should run good after it's rebuilt. This one is pretty simple. It's just those bolts that need to be taken out. Uh, just take your time, it's, it's fairly easy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get these packed up and ship them out. Well, I think I got a pretty good deal. Two jet skis with titles that 
kind of run. One runs, the other one will run after a carburetor clean. I, I really believe it will. And a double jet ski trailer that doesn't really need anything besides a wiring harness, which is very easy to fix. Yeah, I think I got a really good deal. You guys tell me, would you pay $500 for these? A couple things I want to address. The compression test wasn't very good. I don't know if I did something wrong because it, it said they were all about around 90 and that just doesn't seem right for how it ran, for what they look like when I put the little endoscope down in there. I didn't see any kind of scratching or scoring. It just doesn't really make sense. Um, maybe I did the whole compression test wrong, so. As long as they're running, I think it's gonna be okay. I don't think it's worth tearing them out and rebuilding them right now. We're just get them running, ride them until they die. It, with these old jet skis, I don't know if it's really worth putting all that time and money into rebuilding something that's just gonna go back into an old jet ski, so. I don't know. We'll, we'll ride them and hopefully they run good. <laughs> I guess that's all I can really say. Maybe I did my compression test wrong, who knows. As for the whole aesthetic of them, do you guys like my idea of making them almost original, kind of factory style with the whole 90s graphics and everything? I'd have to custom make all that and probably take a while to make them, but do you guys like that idea or should I do something custom like I did on my last jet ski, maybe one of each? I don't know, maybe that'd be fun. If you guys have any suggestions for that, I love reading them. Leave them in the comment section below. Good or bad, you know, I love reading everything. I'm really excited for what I'm going to do to these. I just, I missed having a jet ski and now I have two. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And living in Florida, I can pretty much ride them all year round. So all good news here. If you guys are excited for this build, make sure you are subscribed. That way you can get notified when I post a new video. I try to post every Tuesday. I mean, I've been keeping on that schedule pretty good <laughs> lately. So also I have an Instagram. I post a lot of behind the scenes pictures of like upcoming videos and what I'm, what I'm doing that week, so make sure you are following me there, I guess. Yeah, and that is about it. I will catch you guys in the next week's episode. Probably on the pontoon boat. Yeah, we'll see. See ya.